Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Mike. And I'm Tyler. And this is the Bonsai Popcast. Welcome to it. Tyler, what's going on? Dude, I, I opened up a Snapple because it's, it, I was about to say it's early. It's not early. It's 11.30. <laughs> but uh, I'm tired, so I need some caffeine. And you know Snapple has facts on the back of their bottle caps? Mm -hmm. I got yes, a fucking fact for you, dude. All right. Hit me. If, if you drill the hole through the earth, it would take 42 minutes to fall through it. it but how do they know that? I don't know. <laughs> Snapple, how do you know that? Science. Science, man. Science. 40, 42. All, all the way through the earth? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Dude, you think, you think Snapple has, like, scientists that are just trying to think of random shit to put on their bottle caps? I think Snapple actually drilled through the earth and tried it out. Dude, we could get to fucking Japan so quickly. Uh, but, okay, so, so, I don't know dick about physics, but what I do know is that the gravity of our planet is mostly created by the density of our core, right? Correct. So, wouldn't we just get crushed in the middle of the planet? Probably. I think the idea is, like, assuming gravity was a constant. Right. All the way through. Yeah, then it would take 42 minutes to fall through. That's a long fall. I think. It's pretty long, man. Like you could you could play a couple games of Fall Guys. You could leisurely masturbate the whole time. <laughs> oh, dude, that would that would be a long masturbation session. I mean, I don't know how long you masturbate for, but forty two minutes that's a long time. I mean, it depends on where I am, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm trying to like, you know, if I'm at a gas station and I just really gotta let one go, like you know, take a minute. <laughs> I'm in bed and I've lit some candles and you know got some incense going and you got the anime playlist on. Yeah, watching <laughs> watching something with a story. Who knows? You got some of that mushishi like uh, background noise going yeah. on. Dude, we got copyrighted for that fucking shiver. See, what we have to do is when we're putting music into the podcast, we have to put yeah. so much music into the podcast that nobody gets the money for it. Oh, this actually reminds me. Uh, so I've been watching a new channel. I can't remember what the channel's name is. It's something weird. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've been getting back into, like, Dark Souls content. Good. Uh, yeah, which is never a bad thing. No. You know? Uh, I actually, yesterday, it, it's been so fucking hot here in Portland that I haven't been able to play games on my computer because the office is too hot. Right. Um, it, it, It's been, like, 90 degrees in the office every day. But I've been wanting to play Dark Souls, so I bit the bullet and bought the remastered version on my PlayStation. Okay. Um, So I, I bought that yesterday, uh, and I played it until, like, 3 a.m. It was great. Nice. But, anyway, this one YouTuber, I wish I could remember the name. I could find it on my Is phone. Is it Vody later. Video? No, it's not. Okay. Um, Is it Iron it, Pineapple? It, no, it's not him either, but it's like him. Okay, so um, it's like memes. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's a very meme -y guy, but he's also, like, very good at the game and has a lot of interesting content. Like, you know, how to beat Dark Souls with only four bosses, you know, shit like that. And he's doing, like, these crazy glitches that I've never seen, you know, stuff like that. Oh, yeah, dude, Dark Souls speedruns. I got, like, I so, not to not to cut you off, but I got this mm -hmm. notification. Like, YouTube has really been trying very hard to suggest shit to me, uh, which I don't appreciate. Like, fuck off, YouTube. Same. YouTube, you listening? Fuck off. Stop doing that. Stop. I don't. Yeah, it's, I don't need it's it. really annoying. Like, uh, I mean, I, I wish I had my phone on me. I would tell you some of this bullshit that they're trying to recommend me. But anyway, so I mean, recommend us because like it's on Bonsai Pop. But uh, yeah. Oh, so we're getting the same recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> so I got recommended this Dark Souls speed run. It was like a half mm -hmm. hour, and I was like, yeah, I'll watch that. And then that dude who put that up like fucking broke his own record like five more times in the same day, which is a world record. That's all my fault. I watched one speed run, and now it won't stop suggesting them. No, nah, it's, dude, it, I've watched, so I fall asleep to Vadi Video videos a lot, because I just, okay. I fucking, dude, you have to watch his content. It's so fucking good. I, I've watched some of it. There's so much now, too. Um, But I'll always wake up to a speed run weird yeah it, it's so strange uh but so so anyway the guy that i was talking about his channel is yimfa it's y-m-f-a-h okay it's very seo friendly yeah super seo friendly <laughs> fucking what <laughs> uh but so he he gets copyrighted all the time because he uses copyrighted uh music right so what he did 
was he bought on Fiverr, he bought music that he has all the rights to. Like, he paid extra for it to get all the rights to it. Okay. And then he uses that in his video, too. And then when he gets copyright hit by music companies, he copyrights himself, and then they have to split the revenue with him. Oh, my God. That's super smart. So every yeah, podcast... Yeah, it's fucking genius, dude. Every podcast, I'll just put my own music in it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that works, right? Yeah, I have a, I have a bunch of shit that I that I've made for the YouTube channel. So I know. That's like, like so all we need smart. is like an intro or an outro song that's ours, or any or and then <laughs> any song, you know, just yeah, yeah. Great. That's great. Maybe I'll just yeah. make some like orchestrations. Devin just messaged me. She's like, don't talk about how you did drugs on the podcast. <laughs> Wait, what? Because, uh, okay, so so one of our patrons uh, wanted to know, I... <sighs> so, on Friday night, mm -hmm. me and you uh, started playing Fall Guys, and we were drinking while we were playing Fall Guys. We were streaming on Twitch, and... And then I went to bed at a reasonable time. Yeah, like a baby. And then <laughs> yeah. left me with Grant. And Grant and I got wasted until Fall Guys just broke. And then I crawled into the fucking Discord server <laughs> at like 5 o'clock in the morning and just said too many things. The Patreon Discord server, that is. Yeah, just too many things that I should be saying to the people who pay me to do my job. <laughs> yeah, I, I woke up to Mike saying, Tyler, I'm sorry, I broke the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I thought people were going to leave, but turns out they liked it. We had a really long conversation about dick lips, yep. uh, which is a real phenomenon. Check your dick, it's got lips. And people didn't believe me. I was like, no, dude. It's true. It's very you? true. Yeah, and then I told him about their vagina holes. It's under your balls, man. Check it out. <laughs> know your body. Know yourself. Know your worth. Sorry, Explore. that's true. This is what sixth grade was for. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things that I said was, I believe it was something around the along the lines of, drugs in the butt generally works, quote unquote, better. <laughs> 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 because somebody was talking about doing cocaine and playing Beyblades. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I I don't condone drugs in the butt. That's how people die. Um, it's true. Though I have myself experimented with a caffeine pill in my butt when I was in <laughs> high school. Of course. Why and I not? I cannot <laughs> confirm or deny whether it worked better. All I can say is that I did it. Uh, all my friends were doing it. So it was cool. And then we went skateboarding. All right. <laughs> was that cool? <laughs> I just oh remember all of us like in a parking garage, like hiding behind a car, stuffing caffeine up our ass. <laughs> but De 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 Devin is right next to me right now, like with her head in her hands. Do not put drugs in your butt. I mean, don't do drugs anyway, because drugs are bad, but don't put them in your butt. Devin, because this is your fault. If she had said nothing, we would have we never would have gotten on this. <laughs> yeah, this is actually your fault, Devin. <laughs> She's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she wanted me to talk about it. Um, but yeah, uh, and definitely don't put cocaine in your ass because you're not going to be able to feel your butt after that. And what if you shit yourself? <laughs> oh, that that would be the worst, man. You couldn't feel it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like that. No, I know like, exactly what you mean. It's like when you have a fart. And all of a sudden, the fart is, like, really, really warm. And you realize you just, like, farted juice out your butt. Everybody's yeah. gone, Ty. Every, everybody stopped listening to this podcast already. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, what were we talking about that was better than this before? Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Back yeah. to that. Back to that. Back to that. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't, don't do drugs. Do, do Dark Souls. Yeah. 
but yeah, I, I was, uh, I, I've been getting back into Dark Souls, meme, meme Dark Souls content that's been a lot of fun to watch, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then playing the game some. So, I, I spent last night going through, I think I'm, I'm in Blight Town right now, like, I'm Ew. gonna go to Quaylog pretty soon. Yuck. What's, uh, what's your favorite Dark Souls boss? I, I would say, like, just aesthetically, I really like, um, I like Quaylog a lot, actually. She's, you know, Oof. nude. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but she's a spider. Yeah, I do hate spiders, though. I'm, I'm trying to... You can put tits on a spider, it's still a spider. Yeah, you have a really good point there. I, I do like Ornstein and uh, and Smo a lot. Mm. I like their their builds a lot. They're really neat. I really like Priscilla. Um, oh, really? She, I like her, yeah. her scythe is cool. Yeah, like, I like her design and stuff. I mean, her bot... Like, I have been uh, kind of idiot savanting my way through Dark Souls 1 for the first time on Twitch. Like... Uh, I decided what my build was going to be and mm -hmm. I went for that build right away and it turned out that build was, <laughs> I don't know. It, it just made the game really easy, uh, for the most part. I mean, I, you know, obviously I had my blight town problems, uh, with just getting poisoned and shit, but I've just been naked running through this game the entire time using the boar helmet that I got from like the first boar and, <laughs> uh, a black knight sword that I got from like my first black knight and just trashing everything in my yeah, way. Yeah, you, you, you got pretty lucky with drops, man. Because, uh, like, you, those drops from the Black Knights are not... They're pretty rare. Like, like, if you have... I think it's if you have three humanity on you, and you kill one of the Black Knights, you have, like, a 17% chance of getting a, a Black Knight sword drop. Yeah. D depending well, on the Black Knight. I never got the great sword, which is what I wanted. I just wanted to be a big, beefy skeleton lady called Scooty McButts. Oh, dude, I, I killed all of the early Black Knights with three humanity, and I got, like, Titanite chunks and shit. Carney. So, yeah, that, that gives you an idea of, of how lucky you got there. But, on the other hand, I've been using the Halberd, and okay. I, I just pushed that thing up to, like, plus four before I even fought the Gargoyles, and I think I was killing them in, like, three hits. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I I, I I believe if I used my two-handed uh, heavy move, I was taking out half their health. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude, it feels good to be powerful. I'm still stuck on Manus, though I haven't um, gone back to fight him again, but Manus pissed me off, so I took, a, I took a little bit of a break. Anyway, Tyler, I want to ask you, how was your anime week? Thank you for waking a good question dude it's a real good question well i have a better question for you first okay. of all did you fucking watch extra olympia kai close yet no nah, i haven't watched it yet but i have been watching anime but we'll That's get to that to hear. after we get to you yeah um what have i been watching man have i been watching I, i'm finishing up food wars uh nice. i've gone through i'm on the third season now and i think there's only three okay uh that show's great that that shows a new guilty pleasure show when i want something to watch and it's elevating my cooking like i'm actually getting better at cooking because of it which is amazing i told devin about that and she got all pissed off at me she was like we were supposed to cook the things on the show and i was like <laughs> i was like i don't i don't like to cook tyler likes to cook i don't know what to tell That's you true. That's like true. If you like to cook cook the shit and she was like that defeats the purpose we were supposed to do it together and i was like well <laughs> i'm pretty sure tyler does it alone i don't know do you do it alone tyler for, for uh, the record? Well, uh, the one dish that I've made from this show so far, I did alone. But, Tyler said he did it alone. But uh, my girlfriend and I do like to cook together. He says him and Amy like to cook together, though. Well, that's good for you. I used to do cooking as a job, so I never want to cook again. Yeah, that that really kills it, man. I, it does, I feel that. It does. People don't understand. Fuck cooking. Especially, oh, God. We'll talk about cooking jobs someday. Um, yeah, let's do it, dude. So yeah, so Food Wars, it is. It's a gift that keeps on giving, dude. Like you think, you think eventually you're gonna get sick of it, and you just keep getting more into it. Yeah, I, I have never used the word umami so much. <laughs> like, I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think umami was something that ever came out of my mouth before, and now umami is on my mind twenty four seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's it's like the Japanese version of savory. 
Yeah, um, I know what it is. It's no, just I was hilarious. Telling, I was telling the audience, Ty, we're, you oh, know, we're I'm talking sorry. to I'm talking, sorry, it's audience. It's not just me and you here, you know? He was doing some anime exposition, and I forgot. It was <laughs> not so good. Is, but, like, is umami any different than savory, or is it, like, specifically Japanese savory? I think it's different. I think umami has a... I, I would have to look it up to know for sure, honestly. I think you, mommy has a nice rack heard it here first man <laughs> who uh so what else you've been watching no you're, you're right dude umami or savoriness is one of the five basic tastes oh so they just call it umami and we i guess so call it savory like plebs umami's a better name for sure it, is. I, it sounds more fancy if i was to yeah. go to a restaurant and spend 75 dollars on a meal i would expect them to tell me about the umami yeah is that expensive is 75 dollars for a meal expensive it's pretty expensive. Is that like actually expensive? You know what I mean? Like, like, is that poor people expensive or is that yes. just plain expensive? Both, I think. Okay. Well, okay, okay. Like a fancy restaurant, like right, like Ruth's Chris, for example. That's a fancy restaurant, right? Sure. I think so. I've never heard of it. Really? It's like a nationwide chain steak place. If it's a chain, then it's not fancy. No, no, but it's like a fancy chain. Yeah. Like the Olive Garden? Okay, okay, okay. So I, I've been to... No, not like the fucking Olive Garden. <laughs> I wear a shirt to the Olive Garden. The breadsticks are good, though. Are you saying you don't wear a shirt when you go out normally, or...? <laughs> no, no, like I wear a nice shirt to the Olive Garden. Ah, I see, I see. They serve wine in bottles. Okay, so for our anniversary... Me and yours. It was, it was like half anniversary, like half Christmas, basically, because I think we went either on Christmas or Christmas okay. Eve. We went to a sushi place in Portland um, called Nimblefish, and that place was fancy as fuck. Nimblefish. And I think the total bill was like $200. Uh, but what did your meal cost? Because you probably ordered like $100 in drinks, right? No, we had one drink each, I think. Okay. Yeah. It is a set. You don't get to choose your menu that you get what they give you. You just go in and whatever they're making that day is what you get. It, it, it was one of the best experiences of my life, to to be fair. It is like the place maybe seats 30 people. Oh, that's always nice. Yeah. Yeah. The, the sushi chefs are literally right in front of you explaining where the fish came from, when it came in. The, like, history of it as they're making it. There's no soy sauce. They put the wasabi on for you because they know exactly how much each piece needs. Like, it, it, and, and it's, like, one piece of each sushi. And you get to try, like, this plethora of different types of fish. Plethora? Yeah. Yeah, SAT word of the day, dude. A plethora. It, it was unbelievable good. And I think that entire meal was between two hundred and two hundred fifty dollars. Damn. Okay. Yeah. I went to I went to a fancy restaurant one time when I was a kid. It was a five star restaurant. It was called the Blue Herring, uh, or Heron. And now it's now it's not fancy anymore. It used to be much more fancy, and it was like it got unfancied. Yeah. It, it's more <laughs> like business cash now, super cash. Okay. But before it was like you know wear a tie and. Uh, it was dark, you know, they kept the lights real dim and there was like nice music there. I think they might've had like an actual string, like quartet and, uh, oh, neat. the kitchen was open, you know, you could see it through the glass and that's always cool. Y- I like that. I tried duck for the first time. It was okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a big fan of duck and I left hungry cause f- fuck fancy restaurants and their tiny ass pussy portions that's stupid (laughs) i don't want to have to go to mcdonald's before i go to a fancy restaurant to like be full you know what i mean that sucks (laughs) yeah no i totally know what you mean give me that give me that fucking swordfish cut and then multiply it by eight and i'll be fucking happy Uh, devin devin just (laughs) devin is observing this podcast by the way and she's commenting as we go and she's like remember that time we went back to the blue heron and your dad was in sweatpants and you were in like a fucking suit (laughs) because it changed so much (laughs) yes i remember that it was good though we had we, uh, we had dates wrapped in bacon and that shit was fucking that is like that is like generic fancy food man so good 
I know. That's what I said. They went they went business cash, dude. Like food right now is one of the primary happinesses in life because you can't fucking do anything else. I feel the exact opposite. I feel like food is my primary sadness because we fucking can't get all the food that I like, which exists outside of this house. You you won't get delivery or can you not get delivery? I mean, like we don't have any delivery options out here. Oh, okay. Yeah, like nobody. See, I, I can get nobody. Delivers. I have like three or four different delivery companies that will come to me. Yeah, we don't have fucking anything, and we don't have like we don't have Uber Eats out here either, which like really okay, sucks. I have a fucking beef with Uber Eats, dude. dude. Don't even get me started. Or do you know that's fine too? Okay, but Uber Eats can fuck my nuts. Like I oh. have had, I've had so many. Th- there's okay. There's a sandwich place downtown. Oh, God. Called Lardo. Lardo? Yeah. That's amazing. It is, without a doubt, one of, if not the best sandwich shop in Portland. Okay. But anyway, they have a meatball bon me sandwich that is to fucking die for. Their tuna melt is also stupid good. Everything on the menu is amazing. But their their meatball bon me is, is phenomenal. And when I moved, I moved out of the area for delivery, for their regular delivery service. And I was like, fuck. I'm never going to get this shit again. I'm mad. But I was looking online the other week, and Uber Eats is like, oh, yeah, we got Lardo. I was like, fuck, yes. I'm going to get me some Lardo. So I get on Uber Eats, and I'm going through, and I am and I go over to my girlfriend. I'm like, guess what I'm getting? And I show her, and she's like, oh, yeah, get me the tuna melt. And I'm like, okay, it's going to be an experience. It's going to be great. And I... I, I put in the order. I'm getting their fucking awesome fries. They have these, like, dirty fries that have, like, banana peppers on it and Parmesan cheese and, like, pork shoulder. And it's, it's so good. Oh, my God. I want it. And and I, I put it all together and I, and I put in my card. And as soon as I put in my card, it's like, there was an error. So I try it again. Same thing happens. I'm like, all right, fuck you, phone. And I throw my phone against the wall. And I go to my computer. And I try to do it on the computer. Same fucking thing happens. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'll try again tomorrow. I'll just make food here today. And I'll try again tomorrow. I'm upset, but it's not the end of the world. So I try again the next day. Same fucking thing. Every day for a fucking week, dude. This happens. That's how much I wanted this fucking sandwich. (laughs) And then finally, after a week, I try again... And the fucking app says, oh, you're not in the delivery area. What? Yeah. I thought they were going to say like, oh, we don't take visa. No, it's that we we weren't in the fucking delivery area the whole time. Well, why are you showing me the restaurant then? That sucks, bro. It's like every Pokemon season where Ash loses. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, it was it was it was rough. Sorry about your sandwich. Yeah, we just like it, we we can go out and like pick things up, but I want Cajun Cafe, okay? And Ooh. in order to get Cajun Cafe, I gotta go to the mall, and I don't want to go to the mall right now because the mall is in a really dirty, nasty city, and it's full of a bunch <laughs> of dirty, nasty, stupid, moronic people who are definitely not wearing masks, and. Uh, <sighs> just can't yeah that's a great reason to not get it man i'm sorry it sucks that i like food is like my one saving grace right now when i'm having a shitty day i'm like tacos well we did get tacos not too long ago though again we had to go out there to fucking get the tacos what are you doing on my phone (laughs) stay off my phone there's it's presence in there. The, (laughs) Devin's like now's my chance he's distracted (laughs) oh my god so, uh, did you, I mean, did you watch, did you watch any other anime other than Food Wars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I watched, um, obviously still watching ReZero. Yep, me too. Um, uh, last yeah, episode was good. Yeah, dude, it's starting to really kick off. I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. We got to see, uh, shit, what's her, uh, what's the, the beast lady made? I can't think of her. Frederica. Oh, Frederica? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got to see her, like, transform into all this crazy cool stuff and, like, the the bow hunter is is back and doing crazy shit. It's, mm-hmm. it's cool. I'm I'm very excited. Uh, I I was kind of like lackluster on the season to start, and now it's like building, dude. Every single episode is starting to go somewhere, and it's starting to get exciting. I'm pretty sure next episode is going to be super tight. Like uh, 
like i think we're gonna get some good exposition because like he's in with beatrice now uh beatrice mm-hmm. is a really big part of this season so it's gonna i also love beatrice oh yeah she's great dude she's awesome beatrice uh she plays a really big role in the season so i'm super excited to see how that is going to go um, yeah i'm really excited for that too and then together we watched weathering with you with the yeah, patrons we did that yesterday which was like pretty good, honestly. You know, it's much better. Uh, so I spent the morning. It's two fifty eight right now. I woke up at like nine. Um, I spent the morning writing the script and doing all my right. research and stuff because I had a feeling that uh, there was more to it than I was getting out of it, and there definitely was. Um, though I did have to make some intellectual leaps uh, to find a couple of things, and. Uh, I think it came out really well. I'm excited for you to read that script. Uh, Sweet. Two of the things that people came out with the most out of that movie was that... Um, they, get off my phone! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, we were on a professional podcast. Yes, this is a professional <laughs> podcast here where my girlfriend is harassing me. Um, so yeah, a lot of people took away from the movie that uh, either... Um, Hodaka is like a super selfish asshole who was basically mm-hmm. like fuck the world for true love. Not the case. Um, and then a, a, almost every single other person, if not every single other person who did a review on that movie, said it was basically just a giant call out to uh, climate change, which I also do not think is the case um, at all. In fact, I don't think the movie really had anything to do with climate change at the fuck all. That's awesome. I, I love when, like, we're able to do some research slash you're able to do some research because you're just better at the cultural stuff than I am. Thanks. Um, yeah, it, it's just true. Like, we, we both have strengths that really back each other up on script writing, which is awesome. But the cultural aspects that you can bring to scripts are just, like, infinitely better than what I can. I'm, <laughs> I'm super excited about it. I think this is going to be, like, a really original take. Um, I love that. I love it when we come out with something that's just unique and fresh, you know? Mm-hmm. It, yeah. Like it's not, it's not possible every time, but when it comes, when it happens, like I think those are our best videos. Fuck. Yeah. But yeah. Have you, uh, have you been watching anything else on, on the cash on the super cash? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, Kirito's back. Oh God. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. He, uh, let me, let me tell you, I'm not, I don't care if I'm spoiling SAO for anybody. I don't think anybody cares if I'm spoiling it for them either. Yeah. Why are you watching uh, SAO? <laughs> Fucking I go got to, better. dude. I, I've got to, I've got to see it through. I'm talking to the audience. Because... I know why you're watching SAO. You're watching uh, SAO because you have a problem. I don't know why yeah. everybody else is watching SAO. Stop watching that fucking show. It sucks. Tyler yeah, will just good. tell you about it. <laughs> I will. I will tell you about. It. All right. So here's here's what's going on, right? So Kirito, he was brain dead, and then they put him in a thing because he was brain dead. So then he was unbrain dead, but he was still brain dead in the real world. Mm-hmm. So he's brain dead, but he's not really brain dead. But then he got shocked in the fake world, so now he's double brain dead, right? So he's double brain dead, exceptioned, and then he hasn't been a character for the entire fucking season, which has been amazing, right? Focusing on other characters, not giving a shit about him. Uh, Dumbledore dies. Like, <laughs> if you if you've watched my fucking or if you've actually been watching that, that actually kind of makes sense to you in a way. Um, <laughs> and and finally, the the people in the real world that are like, oh no, we gotta save Kirito. Everything's going bad. They're like, what if we take the image of Kirito from his friends and then implant those images on? Kirito, and then he'll have his own self-image again because that's the actual problem. Is he doesn't have any self-image of himself, which apparently makes it impossible to move because that's that's what's going on. That's a, that's what's happening, right? Okay, it's it's true. Um, I mean, he is a pretty vanilla protagonist. Yeah. So then they do that, and like the most, the best part of the entire fucking last episode is Kirito's literally about to kill himself. Like literally in his brain, I think it's in his brain. He's like in a dark space, and he takes his own hand and he stabs it into his chest to pull out his own heart. And then like Asuna and other people show up in front of him because they're the people that are they're using their versions of Kirito to implant on Kirito, but it's not enough. Apparently his harem isn't enough people to to put Kirito's face back on his face. Wait, so all these so Kirito's like, 
I'm going to Kitaru myself, and then yes. everybody shows up and they're like, "Don't do it, Kirito," and he's like, "You're not good enough." <laughs> and then just Pr- pretty much, like, at- except for it's not everybody. It's like Asuna. Uh, this is his hot cousin there. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. His cousin okay, and yeah. uh, Sinon. It's those three. But then his his friend Yujio, who is is Yu-Gi-Oh? from the first season, Yujio, like Yu-Gi-Oh with a different pronunciation. It's E U G. E O, I believe. But yeah, it's Yujio. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, who is not real? He's part of the fake world, but his soul is real, even though it's artificial. Shows up and it's like, boom! Now that there's four people, it's enough. And then he comes back. <laughs> so now he's not. So he's not retarded anymore. No, he's not retarded anymore. Oh. But let me tell you, dude. Because <laughs> I just want it, SAO told- would be so much better if it was just Kirito being like, ah! <laughs> just <laughs> running around with two swords, just like, just like eating stuff he's not supposed to eat. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like picking his nose with the end of the swords. Asuna's like, hey, hey, no, 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 Kirito. He's like, you pretty big boobs. <laughs> Waifu! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now nobody's listening anymore. It's good. Alright. Yeah, now now you've officially offended everybody I've offended who's everybody. still here. I've offended everybody. People really liked the uh, wet-ass pussy last week, so I don't know. They maybe, really did. Maybe they'll like that extremely offensive. <laughs> Mid-90s oh, rendition of retarded Kirito. But let me tell you, man, they, I, I don't think it was last episode, I'm I sorry. think it was the episode before, <laughs> but they brought in every fucking person they could from old seasons. Tyler, and like, if you tell me to... any more about Sword Art Online, I am <laughs> no, going to no. cut out my own chest. No, 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 you gotta, you gotta hear oh this, God. right? They're fighting, and everything's going bad, because the Americans are here, that's a, that's actually part of it, the Americans have infiltrated, and, and everything's going bad, because there's too many of them, but suddenly, everything's okay, because who comes in? These people I've never seen before, but apparently they were from one of the movies, so they come in to help, what? and then they die. Yeah, I don't even know their names. What I was anime like, who makes the fuck are these movies, people? like, like, canon? That that never happens. I know. Okay. I know. Okay. So that so that happens, but then it's still not enough, and they're still losing. But then Austin is about out of strength, and then suddenly Yuki, the girl who died like three seasons ago, it was like two seasons ago, but whatever, she died in Mother's Rosario arc. Is she's not back, but she's like in Austin's brain, and she helps her stand up. Like basically, any character who had any importance in the show at some point somehow makes it back for this fight. I hate this. Even the ones that died. <laughs> this, this is awful. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly feel like at this point, I'm watching it just so that I can give a summary of what happened on the last episode on the podcast. Because oh it's so dumb. It's so dumb. So have you watched anything else, Tyler? Yeah, no, that's it, man. All right. <laughs> and, and and I think I finished Mushishi between the last pod, pod and this one. Excellent. All Both seasons? No, 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 no. Just the first one. Oh, okay. Q music. All right, so uh, my my anime week. Uh, let's see, I've been watching anime. So Devin and I have decided that we need to do more face to face activities, right? Because I'm always I'm always here glued to my desk and yep. you know just like doing stuff, and she's always working on her art. Talking to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's always she's always she's always working on art and stuff. Speaking of which, she finished up Papu last week, which is our like channel's mascot. Very good. She's been doing some more drawings that I'm excited about as well. Yeah, check Instagram. She's awesome. Yes, uh, at Ghost Saibu S A I B U, all one word. Ghost Saibu on Twitter and Instagram. You should definitely check her out. Um, yeah, we definitely retweeted her on Twitter too. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, and you know, I wanted something that looked like a cross between like Botan, uh, from Yu Yu Hakusho and Ayane from Dead or Alive and then give her her own twist and keep with the bonsai pop color scheme. And it all came out look really well. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited for fan art cause I think that's going to be really good. Um, so if you do want to post fan art, you should send it to us, check it out. But anyway, 
face to face activities, we I decided that uh, I wanted to pick up a shogi board. So I went online and I found a, a decent shogi board. Now a traditional mm-hmm. shogi board turns out to be like seven hundred and something bucks, dude. Hot damn! Like these things are fucking ridiculous. I mean, they're kind but you of can a, get like a plastic one for like twenty. <laughs> no, no, I got a nice wooden one. Um, but oh, nice. but the like it's just a board. It's like something you could put in a backpack and like bring with you. Mm. You know, um, has a little yeah. drawer for the pieces. Uh, and shogi is Japanese chess. It's way cooler than chess though, because uh, you can return pieces to the board after you've captured them oh. from the other player. Yeah, it's really neat. It's really cool. Um, and that is cool. And I've been getting a lot better at it because I'm planning on, I'm planning on one day, one day, I'm gonna get all those fucks together from that chess tournament, and I'm gonna challenge them to a shogi tournament. And I'm gonna kick their fucking asses. That's right, Joey the Anime Man, coming for you, Sea Dog. Gonna fucking see my butthole. Uh, who else was in there? I Patch Wolf. Uh, what can I say? You're a really nice guy, Jeff. <laughs> You're Canadian. Seriously, what's what's your last name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we've been playing shogi, and the other thing is uh, we picked up we picked up a a new record player because my my old record player I need to take it apart and clean it, and I might need a new belt for it. So we kind of got one like a little like one from Walmart, picked up some vinyls, and then uh, Toxic, one of our one of our patrons, uh, sent me uh, the FLCL soundtrack on vinyl. It's a double vinyl. One is yellow. That's awesome. One is blue. Yeah, it's super cool, dude. I, I really like vinyl. Um, I, I, I know I was talking to you earlier about it, but uh, the thing that's great about vinyl is that with with music now uh, and CDs and MP3s, the problem with it is it's... Um, what's, it, what's the word, Tyler? Compressed. Everything is compressed, yes. right? So... You're losing quality with every single iteration. Exactly. And and when you compress something into an MP3, you start waging a volume war. So MP3s tend to be extremely loud. And what they try to do is they try to push all of the instruments and everything so that they come out. You, you have to raise the volume and raise the volume on everything. And it just, the, the sound really attacks you. Whereas a vinyl... Uh, volume is dependent upon the grooves, right? How deep the grooves and, right. you know, or shallow. And vinyl allows a lot more room for the music to breathe. So it, it's it's just the best quality sound that you're going to be able to get. And it's more true to the actual recording than anything else that you're going to be able to get. And that's kind of why we've had a resurgence of vinyl in the last couple of years. Um, mm mm-hmm. So yeah, so we've been listening to vinyl and playing shogi. Uh, I got I got uh, the Stranger by Billy Joel on vinyl, which uh, oh, that's neat. You know me, I fucking love Billy Joel. And then I got Thriller from Michael Jackson and uh, Daft Punk, Random Access Memories. So I've just been having a good time. You know, we got tears. Dude, next time, uh, <laughs> tears next for time we're down in San Diego. Uh, my dad has an entire vinyl collection. No shit, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he had a wicked nice turntable, in fact. I remember like yeah. going over and being like, ooh, Papa Tyler, that's great. <laughs> yeah, but Papa Tyler. I got I got Tears for Fears, dude, on vinyl. That's great, You know Tears man. for Fears, I'm... right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fucking, <laughs> such a weird... I love Tears for Fears. I'm sorry. Unapologetic. Um, and, of course, I have, like, my old punk vinyls and stuff. But right. um, after we play Shogi... Uh, generally we eat and i've been watching march comes in like a lion which is a show about an orphan who is a professional shogi player and he's very sad he's a sad boy and very sad he like we haven't gotten super far into it but there's this other family that lost their mother who's kind of it's a it's a family of girls and their grandpa and they kind of taking care of him a little bit and like all the characters in the show are really interesting it's a really good show so far i'm liking it a lot um that's great and obviously uh you know i've been watching re-zero 
and I finally got G Gundam sent over to my new PC. So I am just starting to pack away some G Gundam episodes. And one of the things that I've noticed, so so Tyler, you're not you're not a huge Gundam fan, um, and that's fair. No, nah, I've never been a I've never been a huge mech fan in general. Honestly, there are some there are some mech animes that I, I've really liked. A lot of them were one shot guys, though. You know, like uh, there was some on Netflix that were really good. Uh, Knights of Sidonia mm-hmm. was awesome. Um, a, cu- a couple others, uh, Grand, I can't remember. Anyway, it, Gundam tends to be these giant space opera type of things where it's like, oh, there's politics and all this fucking shit. You know, I mean, we covered Gundam. Mm-hmm. We covered uh, fucking Gundam Wing. Uh, but yep. G Gundam is just a shonen fight anime with Gundams, and it's great. It's, oh, uh, that kind of does sound great, honestly. Yeah, like basically the premise is we kind of fucked up the Earth, so everybody moved to space colonies, uh, you know, and it's just the colonies are just the countries that were on Earth, but they're called Neo blank now. So it's like Neo Japan and Neo America, Neo China, and Neo Mexico. And <laughs> fucking Neo Mexico is just a giant sombrero, dude. <laughs> <laughs> floating in space <laughs> like i'm not even shitting you it was i was like wow oh my god and the thing is it's like that's that's a little fucked <laughs> the thing is it's like it's just it's hard to be mad at japan i mean i'm not mexican so i couldn't be mad at them anyway like if if you're mexican and you're offended by the fact that japan literally thinks of you as a giant sombrero then i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm sorry you know but it's like japan is just they're so locked in their own Japanese closet that they don't even understand that they're racist. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's it's ridiculous. But yeah, it's um so the whole premise is is that once every four years, all the countries send down one warrior in a Gundam to take part in this big competition that just is waged wherever, whenever on the planet. Uh and then whoever wins, that country reigns supreme for the next four years. So wait, it, it's world battle royale where everybody has one representative. Yes, more or less. I mean, there it, it has to be one on one matches. Ah, um, uh, okay. But yeah, and then there's a subplot where the main character is it like a duel? Yeah, like like they're just like walking around. Somebody's like, "Hey, you, I want to fight." Kind of. Yeah. I mean, so like, there's. A little bit of subterfuge with it you know like you know the the gundam pilots like go down on the ground they travel from place to place like last night i watched the the um gundam canada one you know where obviously it's a big burly guy with a fucking axe and a beard <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's so funny they dude. just lumberjacked it up yep, like <laughs> yeah um and yeah so it's like the the subplot is this guy named domo Kashu is neo japan's fighter but his brother and his father created this thing called the Dark Gundam. And his dad did it for good reasons, and his brother did it to take over the world. And uh, his Domon's mother was killed in an altercation where the cops tried to seize, or the military tried to seize the Gundam, and then his brother took off with it. And his dad was given uh, not capital punishment, but he was cryogenically frozen forever. Uh, so Domon is after his brother and this Gundam that his brother and his dad created, uh, can replicate itself. It can heal itself. Uh, it's kind of like a zombie Gundam almost. So it has all these elements of, you know, this, these, these great shonen anime. Um, and it, it, it's so much fun. And I think that like a lot of people think back on it very fondly, particularly myself, but, uh, I gotta say the dub is not as good as I remember it being. Oh really? It's kind of fucking dirt, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm still watching it in dub, but man, it, it's like it's like one of those it's ones. Some, it's got some issues, huh? Yeah, it's like one of those ones where like somebody's dying and the other person's like, "No, <laughs> like, don't, no, mom." <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's just not it's just not that it's just not good um i want to check out jinro because that looks really cool uh, i've seen it on verve a lot so i'm gonna actually watch that probably this week nice. yeah because if it's good we'll yeah do maybe maybe i'll it. start uh march comes in like a lion too because that sounds like a fun one for us to do yeah uh it's a longer one i think it's like 50 episodes 
Um, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, that's something we can do over time because, you know, I mean, one of the things... I've been blasting through, like, 50 episodes. Like, I did Legend of Korra in two days. Oh, yeah, Yeah. that's right. Oh, we got to talk about Legend of Korra. But first, let's talk about Patreon. As you know, we always talk about Patreon just a little bit. It's something that's very important to us. And last week, we talked about how we have... Uh, these patreon testimonials that have started coming in and uh, they're amazing i mean we have we've gotten like (laughs) we've gotten like full reviews um and one of them somebody literally did like a multi-faceted review yeah with overall scoring with different categories yeah uh it it was it was by alpha sigma and i actually yeah i actually want to read this one because hearing about the patreon from us we can tell you that it's the best community on the web but hearing from somebody who's actually in the patreon is a completely different story uh and we hope that you don't skip this because these are really great so alpha sigma says they put out a, a a thing as to how they score shit, basically. So community, four out of four. Big contributing factor for me to uh, for staying in a Patreon is the community. Patreon communities tend to be smaller, more personable. I was blown away at how welcoming the Discord was when I entered. Within the first 10 minutes of entering, I already received a message from one of the content creators, Tyler, and several other what users. Up? Out of all the other content creators on Patreon, I've done at the highest available tier. Bonsai Pop is the most active and engaging. Generally speaking, this community is very respectful and open. I have to say the level of transparency is amazing. Sometimes Tyler does video editing streams and there are updates about exciting things coming up the viewing parties are hilarious with tyler and mike patreon three out of three ever seen content creators who just don't respond back even when you're at the highest tier you send them a message and it's like your message just got tossed into a black hole seriously this is one of the worst feelings being a patron and it sparked my interest to reviewing some of them bonsai pop actually has content creators that get back to you in a reasonable period of time discord's an effective way of communicating with content creators bonsai pop the q a channel is a good place to ask questions for the content creators but discussions can also happen in other channels it's just not limited to, uh, to that one channel content creators are also also open to suggestions and discussion. I joined around the time when they were thinking about a different approach to take for their content, release schedule, etc. I wrote up some lengthy post resonating with their situation. It was nice seeing that what I said was taken into consideration. Content creators that listen, even if they don't agree with something, is important. Uh, and for the most part, the benefits are accurate on the Patreon. Although I think the wording related to shoutouts could be adjusted. Even if tied on money, becoming a patron for $1 to enter is an amazing community is a huge plus. The tiers also don't jump much. It's currently one three nine twenty fifty. I'd recommend the higher tiers because honestly, I think this group deserves it. Overall score, 10 out of 10. Dude, we aced it. Yeah. <laughs> like also and i just want to take note that the part that mike uh skipped over a little bit which was the wording that uh alpha sigma thought was like a little off uh i saw this review like five minutes after he posted it and i went and checked the wording and i agreed with him on part of it so i changed the wording <laughs> One special thing that uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit is that um, obviously it's been a really rough year for everybody, Um, you know, like all over the world um, and America in particular is in a really rough spot right now with the pandemic and it's been affecting everybody on every level, Uh, you know, from your your average nine to fivers to people who work weird, stupid jobs like we do on YouTube and um it's been it's been difficult to be creative and uh you know we had a long talk with our patrons and some people on twitch not too long ago and everybody was really cool about it you know we were just trying to explain that you know like we're tired you know we've been doing this youtube thing for years and years and years non-stop grind 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 and considering all the other factors that have come into play over the past six months it's just been making the job harder and yeah and and we're not the only ones either like we have a ton of friends that are feeling the exact same thing exactly uh like lots of them i mean even arlo put out a video the other the other week just being like i need a break um that being said we're not taking a break we love doing the podcast talking to you guys is is really fun uh like i look i genuinely look forward to this podcast every every week same uh the podcast is one of the few times that mike and i get to just sit down and talk about whatever the fuck we want uh, because we don't live 
even on the same fucking coast. Yeah. So this is like our hangout time, mm-hmm. you know, which is awesome. Exactly. Um, but our our patrons took it upon themselves to make a video for us and like without telling us at all totally secret like got our girlfriends in on it got fucking ryan and grant in on it um obviously like our our old partners tree school they helped create bonsai pop uh they and in this thing was an hour long and it was just like it was the first time for us like seeing a lot of our patrons. It was the first time for us hearing their voices and they were all just saying like the nicest things about the Patreon and our content and just being so encouraging and thoughtful. Like we, we both fucking cried like a lot. We we broke the fuck down. (laughs) Yeah. And it was a complete surprise, like fucking Shinji and, and everybody who was in on this, but like they Shinji messaged us being like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm a film student in school. And because of the pandemic, my school decided to have like a film, you know, contest and my film won, and it's based off of you two. So I would really love it if you guys would check it out. And it's like, how can we not check that out? Yeah. You know, they like tricked so, us into watching it. <laughs> yeah. They tricked us into watching it. And we go into the channel to watch the, the film. And there's like, 25 other people in there were like what is going on (laughs) yeah it was it was a it was a real like once in a lifetime thing like nobody's nobody's ever done something that nice for me before and yeah um shout outs i don't know if anybody ever will again (laughs) like yeah like like shout outs to everybody who was involved in that um cynical uh wrote it was one of our patrons wrote a bunch of music for it uh toxic yeah, th- and fucking shinji edited it like they they just they fucking killed it i mean uh they they have this secret discord channel dude like i just like i just really want to say uh like thank you guys so much and these are the type if you do join the patreon these are the type of people that are going to be in there they're like the nicest coolest fucking bros you're ever going to have all of them yeah, it was really unreal to have something that massive done because we make anime content. Oh, yeah. You know, like I I can't imagine anything like that ever happening again. Ty, you've been yep. playing Death Stranding, you said. I haven't played Death Stranding that until shit. I put it down to start playing uh, uh, Dark Souls again. Oh yeah, that's right. So, so how have you been liking Death Stranding? I, I will tell you, I almost dropped it. Really? Yeah. Uh, when I was finishing up the first section of the game before the first boss fight, I told myself that I had to get through to the first boss fight because I was ready to drop it. Like, why though? I was finding it really boring. Really? Um. Yeah, I was just like, I'm just traveling from place to place, carrying shit on my back, and I'm pressing the right trigger, I'm pressing left trigger a lot, and cool, duh, it's raining, I better crouch. Like, I, it, it was really starting to grind on me, and I was just, I told myself that I had to get through the first area okay. before I made an opinion, so, and get through the first boss fight. So, I mean... All right. Well, what did you like? Let's start from the beginning here. Uh, so, what did you think like going right into it? You know, because like it has this big opening cinematic, and then you're walking down the hill and the fucking yeah. Music- I really liked the opening. Uh, I thought the opening was great. I love the music in it. Like the the musical choices are awesome and like very atmospheric. Dude, it's on vinyl. Um, yeah, and and it's very pretty. Um, oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it, it, it like. It's on a PS4. It was it yeah. was on a regular PS4. That game was fucking gorgeous, dude. Yeah, which I mean, like you know, I just played like I, right before this, I had finished playing Ghost of Tsushima. So my my expectations for beauty were pretty high, right? You know, already going into it, but I I was very impressed. Like it, it, it's it's a very very cool game and it's super interesting. I sometimes I I need to like f- remember how to do something because there's so many controls considering it's just fucking walking, <laughs> um like cons- it's literally FedEx simulator, but there's so much that you have to take into account still. Uh-huh. 
And the the if you tried to scroll through the tools or, or the tips, it would take you like five minutes. Oh, I mean, probably longer than that. Like, it, yeah, it's 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 insane. It so I loved the fuck out of that game. I I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was you remember I was like, oh, Death Stranding, six months, yep. oh, Death Stranding, fucking five months and thirty days, oh, Death Stranding. <laughs> you know, like yep. I was so excited. Um, I really just wanted to see Kojima like whip his dick out on the table. Uh, <laughs> I really, I really, I really like when no, like crazy people are just allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. Um, mm-hmm. The game is, to me at least, was captivating and haunting and confusing. Like you know, I mean, yeah, it's definitely confusing. Yeah, it like it'll 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 make more sense as you go. Uh, the characters, in my opinion, are really cool. Uh, like I love Dead Man. Dead Man is great. Yeah, he's interesting. The uh, the Guillermo del Toro guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he, he's awesome. Uh, what <laughs> Die Hard Man, dude? Yeah, Die Hard Man. His name's Die Hard Man. Yeah. That's so that's the, that's the best. <laughs> okay, like uh, yeah, I I have no problems with the characters. Like honestly, I think I just spent too much time in the first uh area. Like I should have just streamlined it a little bit. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, because now that I've gotten into the second area, I'm more engaged with the game. Yeah, and like uh, you get to the point where you can make trucks and bikes, and yeah, if you go back to the first area, it becomes much easier to do some of those missions. Like I remember, like specifically wanting to stay out of uh, the. Let me see. It's like the northern. Uh, more northeastern part with with the fucking whale. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's like some weather uh, station, and there's every time. Oh yeah, there's the yeah, whale. Yeah. yeah, like that. That place was such a bitch to get through, and there's so many missions to go up there and deliver them products. And like, um, I just think it's so funny how that game kind of <laughs> like if you play it now, you know, it, you have such a different. I would have such a different view on it. I would be like, Oh my God, this is like what it's like being an Amazon worker in 2020, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and that's definitely part of what I'm thinking about. And, uh, yet yeah, now that I've gotten past the first, uh, area and I have more stuff and I have like, like the speed skeleton and the power skeleton, you know, the like, to, so that I can sustain more stuff. And so I can carry more, uh, and I have like the the reverse trikes or whatever they're called. Like it, it's gotten more interesting and more engaging. And like you know, I can build more things. And uh, I I I'm, I I went from I'm about ready to put this down to okay, I'm I'm back and invested in this again. Yeah, which is a good feeling. Fuck yeah. Um, but it it's still it's not one of those games that I can play indefinitely. Uh, I need to take breaks from it. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, well, um, are you playing online? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you don't need PS Plus to play online. What do you What do you think of that? Like how you know random people are like building stuff for you and it's great. The like system. I, I I like the like system a lot. It's really interesting and I find it really funny. Uh, that you can just like like people's shit and that's a good thing. Like that that actually matters. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, well, it doesn't. It doesn't because like you know what I mean. It's like you just like something. You know. It's it, and you're just being like, yeah, I like this dude. Like, good job. Yeah, you know, it doesn't like give you any power, like extra power or anything like that. I mean, it gives you like levels, kind of like right. like levels. But besides that, I mean, it's just it it's it's really fun. Like it, I got to the point where I ended up with so many resources that I was building things just to build them. You know, and and mm. you get these holograms eventually that you can put on them. Uh, that like you know of of, like all these little cool stuff and and, like you get these nendroids and like there's just i don't know it's just like that game just brings back so many good memories to me um you you can you can make your bridges play music if you want to eventually oh that's cool yeah yeah like if you if you upgrade stuff uh, a ton Mm -hmm. you know they don't degrade as much and or you know eventually they don't degrade at all there's just like it, it 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 opens up more and more and more and more. You're actually better off moving quicker through the story and then going back to finishing things later. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the reverse of how I like to play games like that. Yeah, same. Um, but I, but I've sort of been noticing that that's the case. So I've stopped taking deliveries that are out of my way 
and I only take the ones that are towards where I'm going. And like, if there's another delivery going there, then I'll take it. But if there's not, if it's not on the way, I ignore it. Yeah, dude. Oh, wait, um, wait till you get the trucks. The trucks change everything because all of a sudden you can carry like fucking 10 20 times what you could carry before even more i i stole a mule truck and i was able to carry a lot yeah the mule Uh, trucks are shit compared to like what you can eventually get dude like it's it's really cool and you and and that's the thing is like with your extra equipment you can fabricate all this stuff and there's also uh like when you complete um when you complete settlements you know or like the whatever Mm -hmm. they call them uh, shelters and stuff you you get like uh, more gear you know you'll get like colors for your outfit and you know yeah, new shades. my backpack is purple now yeah <laughs> yeah dude oh there's so many cool things there's so many cool dude i fucking love that game oh my god you're making me want to play I, it again. honestly one of my favorite parts about the game is uh norman reedus is the main character right oh yeah and and whenever you're in a private room he'll like just break the fourth wall occasionally and just like look at you and like wink at you or like be like hey i could use a shower you know like, oh, yeah dude <laughs> stuff like that Sniffs i his love armpits. that he, and you can yeah. you make weapons from his shit and piss <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> have you gone to the yeah, mirror I, I got the number two now nice have you, have you gone to the mirror yet the mirror yeah yeah, yeah the sink yeah where he just like fucks with his face basically yeah, like you can like look all over there's a lot of norman and Reedus's butt in that game <laughs> yeah there is it's, it's super it's... I, w- I wonder if they're like listen we need we need a picture of your butt like we need like 80 pictures of your butt from different angles <laughs> it's like yeah man that's fine that's fine that's cool and then there's like an amc ad on the shower like i don't fuck it's so weird it's so surreal that game is so fucking weird man i don't know it's good though it's it's definitely mm-hmm. good, and I I it felt like very adult Animal Crossing to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's it's what I like a lot about it is that it's not the same fucking thing that I've played, you know? Oh, it's yeah. Even even Ghost of Tsushima, which I love and will recommend to literally anyone, is still in a lot of ways an Assassin's Creed or a Batman game, like a Batman Arkham game, mm-hmm. you know? Like a lot of the mechanics are the same. The open world mechanics are the same, and and I mean Yahtzee. If you if you watched his uh, uh, zero punctuation video on it, yeah, he, he hits a lot of these things, you know. Yeah, and I totally get that, but they're good. Like like th- that doesn't make a game bad just because it uses the same shit. It just means that it's using the same shit, but you can still make a really good game doing that, and that's exactly what Sucker Punch did. Yeah, I- what I like about this game is that. Everything is fucking new. Like none of this shit is the is similar to any other game I've played. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so many people complained about it when it came out. Like people I weren't exp- I wasn't expecting to complain about it. And it's like I get it. You know, if you don't if you don't like that kind of thing, you don't like that kind of thing. But I well, well like, I, I think I, it's kind of like the people that that complained about the Legend of Korra. Like they wanted something and they got something completely different. That doesn't mean that something different was bad. It just means that it wasn't what you wanted. Yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, it was like, you know, like Jim Sterling didn't like it. Jim Sterling fucking hated it. And he's like a big really? Kojima guy. Yeah, he was just like, he thought it was fucking boring. He thought it wasn't fun. He didn't like the walking, you know, like and, and like I found the walking like super engaging. I don't know. I, I just thought the whole thing was fucking interesting. And the world was it was bleak. But you had, the, you know, you knew other people were around because like there was there was all this stuff left behind by other people and you could help other people out by leaving your own stuff behind and i i, I mm-hmm. just i really enjoyed it i i fucking love death stranding um I, it's funny because like when it, when i said you're making me want to play it again i immediately was like i don't want to play it again i put in i put <laughs> enough time i like five starred every settlement and like i Jeez. i did that game i did that game good As for me, I'm not I'm not really playing anything right now. I'm trying to focus. Fall Guys, dude. Yeah, Fall <laughs> Guys. Uh, I finally got the rainbow water costume all the way, but I'm like down oh, to nice. I'm down to not many um, not many coins and uh, same. And uh, I was playing the other night, and every time I, I would get to like, I still haven't gotten a fucking crown, dude. And I, I kept getting to like the last thing and getting disconnected. Like that's been what? that's been a problem where I've been getting disconnected and it's it sucks because it's like 
when you get disconnected you don't um you don't get any any of your oh you don't get any yeah oh no yeah and they no, keep telling you you're gonna get that. it so i missed out on like thousands of of coins dude i, I was getting that's really awful. pissed but i still haven't spent any of my crowns i think i have five now oh nice uh so i could buy like one of the like legendary items or whatever hell yeah dude, five yeah. crowns dude i just like i keep getting fucked i mean like you've seen it you see you saw when i jumped at that crown oh, I, and i I've didn't get it. it and like oh my god like i'm getting really good at the uh at the one with like the honeycombs where like you have to walk around the honey like the platforms uh disappear underneath you oh yeah yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the tiles yeah, yeah yeah i've gotten really good at that one and i keep dying like right before the other person does like that we're sucks. both falling at the same time also um i got to the i multiple times i was doing the one where you have the platforms that fall and then there's the two beams that are spinning around as Mm -hmm. as like the last match i almost always get to the last match unless i get fucked in a team a team thing you know um and when i get there i uh like i'll be one of the last two people and the fucking beam will come at me in the wrong way where i just can't avoid it it's like the game kills Mm. me it's so so fucking frustrating i just want to cry out that's that's the game that where i primarily get my wins on uh because i i can't win the fucking race to the crown uh i've won that one once and it was by sheer luck because i was like the fifth person and four people missed the crown like i there was no reason for me to win that one uh but the the rotating platform one i think i've lost that one once because i didn't realize the platforms are gonna fall because i had played the one earlier where the platforms don't fall right so i wasn't expecting it but every time since then i've won that one and gotten a crown playing it dude i just wanna Uh, that one doesn't come up enough i just want a crown I just want a crown. Uh, and we did start a. Uh, so uh, we have a we have a, a chat with a, a bunch of our YouTube friends, and I was like, "Hey, we should we should open up a Fall Guys section." So we we have a Fall Guys section. Um, I know that uh, Beta sixty four and Shane are in there. Uh, I'm pretty Re-res, sure John yeah. Riggs. Oh yeah, Rerez. Uh, John Riggs is in there, so we're probably going to. Uh, we're probably going to be doing some streams with them hopefully uh i know that yeah i i was uh i was reading the thing and i i saw uh beta 64 being like because if you don't know mike's uh steam name uh <laughs> you can say it i i don't mind it's okay it's dong wang <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> mike logs on like beta 64 is just telling the story in chat where he was streaming and then mike logs on and his entire chat is like who the fuck is dong wang <laughs> It's me. Who else would it be? I used to be single female lawyer. Um, I really liked that Steam name, but then people were mean to me because I thought I was a girl. So mm. I might change it back to a girl's name just so I can be that fucking guy. I, I gotta get better at Fall. I gotta start winning crowns in Fall Guys though. Before yeah. before you know, I start beating on the boys. Um, the other thing's funny about uh, Andrew Beta sixty four is that we were talking the other day. And um, Andrew Andrew was married, and he said uh, when he got married, like he lost a bunch of fans. And um, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, because like you know he had a bunch of simp's, dude. Like, and I was like, man, really? All, yeah, I was like, man, all my simp's are guys. And he was like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I finally found another. I finally found another person who only gets hit on boys or uh, by boys, and it's me and fucking Beta sixty four. But the thing is, is that. Andrew's like 20. You know, he might be 21. Yep. I'm almost 30. Why am yep. I so why am I still a twink? Why do you, why do people still fucking think I'm a t- Am I do I scream twink at you Tyler? Well, um I'm not going to say outright no, but I'm not going to say outright yes either. What uh, I think that's why you get so many, you know, offers. I do get a lot of offers, man. <sighs> yeah, I, I think it's because you know, you you could be interested. <laughs> like, like if I didn't know you, I'd be like, maybe. <laughs> you know, do like, I give off gay I, I vibes? Is it because I put things in my butt? <laughs> that might be part of it. That's I'm just a five year old. I can't I can't fucking help. <laughs> All right, Ty. 
we have uh, some questions and or comments. Um, so if you join the Patreon every once in a while, we are going to let you guys know that we are recording the podcast and you guys are totally welcome to ask questions or say things. Um, so Octave wants to know if we have any plans for Violet Evergarden. March comes like uh, in like a lion or your lion April. What do you have to say to Octave, Tyler? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, we were just talking about March Comes in Like a Lion, uh, but Violet Evergarden and Your Lion April have been on our list for a long time. Yeah, we have, a, uh, we have plans, um, a lot of, a lot, so obviously we have, uh, October coming up, October is our Hellmouth, um, yes, that's a Buffy the Vampire Slayer reference, one of these days we're gonna have a podcast where I just talk to Tyler about Buffy the Vampire Slayer for an hour and a half, um, great. Yeah, so during October, we do, like, spooky, scary, or hyper-violent anime. Um, and then you, last year, uh, November, we did Show Number. Um, mm-hmm. We're likely going to do something similar than that, but we will probably do some of the Violet Evergarden-type things um, in there as well. Because yeah, we, maybe, maybe we'll do Sad Ember. <laughs> cry Number. <laughs> cry Number. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Um, Nahim wants to say, uh, the theme of weathering with you is WAP is better than Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nahim. Uh, Luthi asks dick lips. Yes or no? Uh, uh, undoubtedly. Yes. Dick lips. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and give that a squid dab right now. There we go. <laughs> Saito wants to know what our favorite video game franchises are. Ooh, franchise? Yeah, that's so different like than Mario this game, or huh? Donkey Kong or yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog. You want honestly? You want to go first? No, no, you go first. Shit! All right, my favorite video game franchises. Um, Darkstalkers is up there. Uh, we're mm-hmm. really, really hoping that one day Capcom will announce that they're finally going to do another Darkstalkers game. Um shit final fantasy i want to say final fantasy i really really like final fantasy games not all of them but uh Mm -hmm. you know final fantasy is just really good anime uh in my opinion um dragon quest is amazing uh if you haven't played any dragon quest games go pick up dragon quest 11 it like you don't have to they're not sequential um other than that's one of those games that i need to pick up dude dragon quest is so fucking bomb and it's a kira toriyama you know so it's like the art is just it feels like home feels nice and cozy Mm -hmm. um i mean uh, you you spout off a couple i'm gonna turn around look at my yeah i've gotta i've gotta think about it a little bit because like i i know like one of my favorites for a long time was halo but it's not so much anymore you know right a lot of my, here's my problem with gaming is that I don't really stick to franchises. I find particular games I like within franchises, you know. Yeah, that's fair. Um, because it's like I haven't played every Zelda game, but I like Zelda games. Oh, I should say know? Zelda because I have played literally every single Zelda game. Uh, yeah, I haven't played every Pokemon game, but I like Pokemon games. Um, Pokemon, would but be I, up I there would for say. Me. Fuck, my favorite franchises. I don't want to be so generic as to say Mario, because Mario's the ones that I like the most. I like platforming a lot. Mm. Um, oh, Super Smash Bros. Uh, has always been a favorite of mine. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Um, fuck. And honestly, like, back before they started fucking it up, Assassin's Creed was one of my favorites for a long time. Really? Like, all the way through uh, Black Flag. No oh, shit. I never got one, into Assassin's one, Creed. One through four, I played every single game. Um, including like the, like, cause it goes like Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed two, uh, and then it goes Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, I think. And then Assassin's Creed Revelations. And then it does Assassin's Creed three oh. and then Assassin's Creed four. Sounds like some I played Ubisoft shit. Well, it, it's because they changed it when they changed the main character. Right, right. So Ezio... Uh, who, who was the the main character for Assassin's Creed 2, was also the same character for Brotherhood and Revelations. And all three of those games, like that trilogy I loved. Nice. Um, and Ezio's story is fucking great. And it's also one of the biggest uh, videos on our on Tricycle. Oh, yeah. Ezio's story you never knew has like 
Yeah, Ezio Auditore da Firenze. There's <laughs> uh, an Italian Renaissance man, like whatever. Grant said. Um, yeah, but uh, Ezio's one of my favorite characters in gaming. He his entire trilogy I fucking loved, and it's one of the only games, or it's one of the only uh, Assassin's Creed characters that they went through basically his entire life. Right. Like he starts off as like an 18 year old, and you end with him like fucking old dying. Nice. So I, I really, really liked Assassin's Creed back in the day. I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game in forever now. I thought you got um, the first four. Odyssey or whatever the fuck it was. Fuck, you're right. I did play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I forget that that's an Assassin's Creed game. Because it doesn't feel like one? It doesn't feel like one. It's a really good game, but it doesn't feel like Assassin's Creed. <laughs> huh. I... One of my favorite franchises of all time easily, like, I, like I'm talking like up there with like Pokemon... Um, mm-hmm. Yakuza. The Yakuza franchise is fucking amazing. Oh yeah, you do love the Yakuza they uh, are so franchise, good, dude. They're so good. It's just good. It's like it's like, man, like just the mini games alone. Like you got like, you got full on Shogi in there. You got full on Go. You got full on fucking uh, Hanafuda. Like all the all the Japanese gambling and shit. You got bowling. Mm-hmm. You got karaoke, which is a rhythm game. You got like just all sorts of stuff and then you can pick up a motorcycle and fucking break it over somebody's head and they walk away saying sorry like it's <laughs> it's those games are so fucking good so fucking good yakuza yakuza yeah, yakuza yakuza if you have not played yakuza go fucking play yakuza you have no excuse it's on pc it's on ps4 i uh, like you can start with any yakuza game though i do recommend um starting with one like Yakuza Kiwami and then playing Yakuza 0. Like a lot of people will tell you to play Yakuza 0 first. I don't think it's a good idea because the progression system is a, a lot different from the other Yakuza games. Um, Yakuza 0 is fun though because it takes place in the like the economic bubble in the 80s. So it has this different atmosphere to it. Um, whereas like the 1 through 6 all take place post uh, Kiryu coming back from jail. And... Uh, you know, I mean, he didn't even know what a cell phone was when he got out of jail, mm. like that kind of shit. So it's, Damn. it's really, it, they're so good, dude. Like Camarocho is just like, it's like home at this point, you know, like every time I enter a Yakuza game, I'm just like, this is the fucking, this is the tits, dude. It's so <laughs> good. So good. I could talk about it all day. Um, but yeah, man, my, my issue is like, I play a lot of indie games and a lot of one-off games. So I don't have a lot of franchises that I follow. You know, I'm not like a, I'm not like one of these Zelda or Metroid guys who's like, when's Metroid Four coming out, Ooh. man? You know? Yeah. Uh, like like a lot of my favorite games, like Hollow Knight. You know, phenomenal fucking game, dude. Uh, but there's only one of them. It's not a franchise, right? You know. Uh, and then some of my like my older favorite games, like uh, God Hand, is still my favorite game of all time. Is that a Capcom there's no game franchise. or a Sega game? Uh, it, I believe, well, so it was made by Studio Clover. Okay. Um, I believe it's Capcom that produced it, though. Mm. Yeah, like, I know, I know it's either Capcom or Sega. It has that Capcom Sega feel to it. I, I'm pretty sure it's Capcom. Nice. That game is fucking amazing and impossible to find. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive, but dude. I, I fucking love that game so much. It. It, it, I don't know how they made a beat up with tank controls that works so fucking well, but, oh, I love that game. All right. So, Talking Bird says, what is your favorite City Pop album, and why is it any album by Henri? <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, do you have a favorite City Pop album? No, my music tastes are super random. Um, And my music tastes are a combination of what I listened to as a as a child growing up, and my raving days. Okay. I have to send you... So I have, like, this weird sort of, like, alternative 80s rock. Like, alternative 80s and 90s rock mixed with, like, 2000 and, like, 10 to 2015 EDM. I feel like you like, like a lot I'm, of I, soft rock. I don't know. Because, like, yeah, when you say yeah, 80s yeah. alternative rock, I think Blondie, um, uh, fucking... Uh, God damn it! I, why is like it's a Billy Idol? That's what. <laughs> well, so, what so I'm wedding? talking about stuff like I'm talking about stuff like uh, Midnight Oil is one of my favorite bands. Toad the Wet Sprocket, 
uh, Semi Sonic, um, you know, stuff like that. Never heard of any of those bands. <laughs> <laughs> it, they're kind of like maybe not Midnight Oil, but like Semi Sonic's kind of in the same vein as uh, like Third Eye Blind. Okay. Oh yeah, you're the dorks that like Counting Crows. <laughs> yeah, I Counting Crows. Hate dude. you guys so much. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, you're the ah, oh, you're the problem. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, one of the and, and then and then I have like all this like EDM stuff. Like I've listened to a shit ton of Porter Robinson. I've seen Tiesto live. I've seen Avicii live. I've seen uh, Armin Van Buren live. I've seen uh, Above and Beyond live. I've seen uh, Dash Berlin. Like, I, I can't. I, there's so many people. Chainsmokers I've seen live. See, that's uh, a band that I've heard of before. Yeah, like, there's so many uh, fucking. I've seen Diplo live like four times. And Dylan Francis I've seen live like maybe six. Nice. Something like that. Well, yeah. City pop <laughs> is a is a Japanese like music genre more or less. I mean, they kind of like the best kind of American example would be kind of like Madonna, Michael Jackson kind of shit. Um, okay. But uh, like the the Tokyo stuff is more loungy. You know, it, it kind of has the same instruments, but it's more of a loungy thing. Um, and it's not it's not by Henri, it's by uh, uh, Toshiki Karamatsu. Uh, and my favorite album is C is a Lady. And there's not a lot of singing in any of those songs, uh, but the like the instrumentals are really good and it sounds a lot like um, Sonic Adventure music kind of. Like uh, oh, cool. especially like the beat the I can see that. Yeah, no, I, I can totally see that. Yeah, so I like I like that album a lot. I definitely recommend Toshiki uh, Katamatsu. He's got a lot of albums. You can find them on YouTube. They're really good. Uh, and then all the other stuff that I have from City Pop is all in Japanese, so I can't read it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like that one a lot. I think a great one would be Shinji's. What do you have against fruit baskets, Mike? Oh my god. <laughs> what do I have? What do I have against fruit baskets? Um, so to be Fruits fair, basket. I haven't seen the original <laughs> Fruits Basket. Um, so I, I don't know how that one is, but the new fruits basket, um, let's see what do I have against it. Uh, I don't really like the art style that much. Um, my reasoning would be that it kind of reminds me of Sailor Moon Crystal. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's got, it's just not my jam. Um, it like, I think the main character's cute. Uh, I'm not really into the whole, honestly, a lot of it is what, what I'm sick of is Japanese romance animes where it's like, you know, you know, they're uh, never, is gonna... that why you didn't like Toradora either? <laughs> it, it, Toradora, what ruined Toradora for me was the dub bad. Um, and like I've seen uh fruits basket in both the dub and the sub don't like the main character's voice in either one of them. Uh, I think the idea of the show is pretty cool, but also it's just like, it's just another kind of slice of life romance, um, with a little bit of fantasy elements where nobody's ever going to fuck. And <laughs> dude, that, that's so funny. Cause like Luthi was like in Torador for that matter. Are you one of those sour weaves that doesn't enjoy a good romance or slice of life, <laughs> which is basically exactly what you just said. <laughs> it's not that I, I enjoy a good romance or slice of life it has to be like they good. gotta fuck man like, I, they gotta fuck i'm trying to think of i'm trying to think of one like i mean i like to tobias dragon maid that's more or less a slice of life anime like i like that yeah, one no it totally is it, but it's also like a reverse isekai and it's got it's got a lot of stuff going on fucking people who don't like dragon maid are on my shit list you you guys <laughs> have not looked deep enough into that show <laughs> yeah what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Oh my god, Conaway. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, Bus wants to know what our favorite anime art styles are. Favorite anime art style? Interesting. <coughs> yeah. Um, whatever fucking, uh, whatever you would call uh, No Game, No Life's art style is my favorite. Oh, see, I would not have, I would not have expected that necessarily. I love the aesthetic of that show more than any other show I've ever seen. 
Okay. Wow. Fuck. All right. The, it's like this watercolory, just beautiful mess. And also the the outlines of everybody are red instead of black. I find it so unique and beautiful and colorful. Like, I love it. It's very crisp and clean. You know what I mean? Like, it's very like. Yeah, but at, at the same time, it's also like incredibly different from every other show I've ever seen. Like, it's super unique. Right, right. Yeah, no, I feel you. Um, my answer uh, is definitely uh, different than that. Um, my f- my favorite art style would probably be. I mean, you gotta you gotta think about like what art art style necessarily means, right? Because you have like you have the Dragon Ball Z eyes, where where Toriyama mm-hmm. basically draws C's and puts a little dot in them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then you have the Vampire Hunter D bloodlust eyes, which are these like crazy like outward eyes um i would have to say yeah, and, then, and then you have the uh sailor moon crystal eyes that are too big for God, you it's fucking they're, they're like bug eyes small pp <laughs> eyes uh <laughs> let's see um i would say that visually i think vampire hunter deep bloodlust is probably one of the best looking anime i've ever seen um in my mind um it's even a, it's 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 a little bit clean for me uh like I really, really like watching old Dragon Ball Z on VHS. Like that's yeah, you like it a little rough around the edges. Yeah, for sure. I like I like it to look hand drawn. I really like um, the record of Lodos that, that's Wars. What was, uh, that's what was really good about uh, uh, Dorohitero too was that it looked dirty. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely not say that Dorohitero is my favorite art style of an, of an anime, but for a newer anime that. You know, like people expect very crisp, clean digital shit now. Um, mm-hmm. I really like the way that looked, but yeah, like the record of Lodos War, I really like the aesthetic of that show. Um, and again, I think Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust would probably be like the pinnacle. It was like right before they kind of went towards um, Full Metal Alchemist looking anime. Mm-hmm. You know, Full Metal it's Full Metal is a little bit more bubbly. Like there's some like the fingers yeah. are a little bit bubblier. Like uh Yeah. I, I like bubbly uh anime. Like Dragon Mage is very bubbly. Very bubbly. Yes. Yeah. And I, I like that style a lot too. I find it really adorable. So it works really well for slice of life stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um and uh last one. Sorry guys if we missed anything. Um Zobris Mage wants to know what anime slash manga would you like to see a live action adaptation of? Oh. Um shit because that's a hard that's that's a that's a that's a hard one like where do you yeah where do you you know what i think that they could do actually well if they put the time in i bet they can make an akira live action adaptation that was that would be good you think so i feel like there would be so much cgi yeah but i think that it could be done well you know yeah like Like, it, it, it has the right amount of like well i was about to i was about to say it's it's sort of like x-men in terms of the amount of shit that uh that they would have to do cgi but they haven't really made a good x-men movie have they (laughs) (laughs) so maybe i'm just digging myself a hole here yeah uh i mean i like i think i think vampire hunter d could be really fucking cool uh if they did a live action version of that um like especially domestic girlfriend what Domestic girlfriend. Domestic girlfriend. Oh no, that would just be the. Let's see it. That would be. <laughs> that wouldn't be. Like, I if I want to see a live action version of something, I want it to be something like really cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't. I was. I was just joking. Yeah, like because I. I actually thought domestic girlfriend at first, and then I was like, that would just be like trash drama. You know what I mean? That would be like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> be like a soap opera. Um, yeah, it would. I mean, I would like because y- you can't do something like Dragon Ball Z. Right. Oh, I've got it, dude. What? Uh, Kaijo. Oh, the butt. The <laughs> yeah, the butt. The butt battle. <laughs> the butt uh, battle anime. Yeah, let's see a live action adaptation of that. Yeah, I'd, I guess I would watch it. Like, dude, unfortunately, like I've seen so many adaptation movies. Like, I, uh, you're the one who's not like a huge movie guy, right? You're the one I'm always like, oh, have you seen this movie? You're always like, no. Yeah, I, I, I don't watch fucking movies like ever. Okay, so like I've seen like the dead or alive movie that they made i've seen like the fucking house of the dead movies like i've seen all the video game adaptation movies dude and sometimes they just get it so fucking wrong and Mm -hmm. and and 
Oh, we got to watch Dragon Ball Evolution with the with the patrons. Oh my god. Oh, we'll do that. We'll definitely do that. Uh, uh, so uh, Cole has been on my ass to to do one of the uh, one of the Greek animes, like either Extra Olympia Kai Close or uh, I can't remember what the other one is that he keeps sending me, but I have it somewhere. Greek uh, anime. I, st- I will never understand Greek anime, dude. Watch it, dude. Watch it. <laughs> Watch Extra Olympia Kai Close. Okay. It will take you 15 minutes to get through three episodes. Watch it. <laughs> I will. Hashtag Mike's never going to watch I don't believe you. Kai Close. If you made it this far, hashtag Mike's never going to watch Kai Close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so good. I want to cover it. And you're going to be so down once you see it. All right. All right. Never going to watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a thing. All right. Well, Tyler's uh, Tyler's sweating his boobies off, so unfortunately, no, they're they're on the floor. We gotta we gotta cut it. Um, but we will be back next week, as always, um, with the Bonsai Podcast. So everybody, listen to Tyler because Tyler has some important things to say to you. Tyler, where can people find us on Twitter? At Bonsai underscore Pop. Where can they find us on Instagram? Tyler at Bonsai underscore Pop. Where can they find us on? Twitch. It's at bonsai underscore pop. No, it's twitch.tv slash bonsai underscore pop. <laughs> Where can they send us a Gmail? I, I don't know what you're saying. Where can they send us a Gmail, Tyler? You're fucking up. I lost you for a second. <laughs> I think he's lying. Uh, bonsai pop team at gmail.com. And you can find us on patreon.com slash bonsai pop. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Bonsai Popcast. I'm here. I can hear you again. <laughs> <laughs> we did. I, I did all the things, Tyler. We're good. We're just saying bye now. Cool. Bye, bye. everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>